Good to see everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, excited to be here. Uh, excited for the season to get going. Uh, excited to play in an NFL venue uh, down in Minneapolis here in about five days. So um, a, a lot of things to look forward to. Uh, a lot of things to find out about the current team that we have right now. You always uh, anticipate you're going to be prepared, but there's going to be things that pop up, uh, issues, situations that, that arise on any given Saturday. Uh, we feel like we've done a good job of preparing this group. They've had great energy, um, great focus throughout the uh, entire three weeks, three and a half weeks leading up to this game. So really look forward to it. I know we have a, um, you know, I, I think Coach Best does a really good job out of Eastern Washington. I know um, just from the expectations that program, I'm sure last year didn't uh, uh, go as planned, but you look at the number of close games they had. Uh, I anticipate a, a much improved defense. Uh, I know offensively, they can challenge you uh, just with their tempo, with the number of skilled athletes they have. A new quarterback, uh, very little film on him, but I do know uh, he can not only hurt you with his arm, but with his feet as well. Um, you know, four of five offensive linemen returning, uh, a number of skilled kids on the defensive side. Uh, looks like they have some veteran presence at all levels. Uh, so it's going to be a, a challenging game. Uh, I don't think we've ever. Uh, played Eastern Washington and, and ever felt like it wasn't going to be challenging. We're going to have to play really good football in all three phases. Um, the word complimentary football uh, has been echoed numerous times throughout our facility and we will continue to echo it uh, as this season or as this week uh, goes on. Uh, we need all three phases to, to help one another. Um, and uh, for us to do that, we, we have to be really well prepared. Uh, we need to understand all our checks, all our adjustments throughout the course of the game. and. Uh, we need to be superior at the fundamentals of the game. We need to be able to get off blocks, tackle. Uh, we need to be able to maintain blocks, um, catch, run, all that stuff. Uh, all the things that sometimes you take for granted, we need to do it at a really high level. With that, I'll, I'll open it up for questions. You guys didn't start the year with that destination game aspect. What does it mean for not just you guys, but for the program as a whole to kind of get the season going on such a high note? Well, it's a unique opportunity. Uh, it's not something that we've you – know, I think the last time – we did this was 2019 back in Minneapolis. And with the, the volume of kids we have, not just from the, the metropolitan area, but also from the, from the state of Minnesota, I think I counted, what, 16 or 17 guys in our two deep probably that are from Minnesota. Uh, it, has, it has a ton of value, uh, especially when you start talking about recruiting as well. Uh, I think it's probably uh, the area of our, our greatest alumni uh, population. Uh, and so another opportunity for our alumni to be engaged with our football program and also to engage with one another. And so I see it as a win-win. A uh, now we got to go down there and play really well. we got to go down there and uh, enjoy the opportunity, but we got to make the most of it as well. Uh, the offensive line battle and why Sundell at left tackle and Brandon at center? Well, over the course of the last couple of years, uh, you know, Brandon's played a lot of games for us at center and has started uh, a number of big games for us. Uh, and, and we've been able to, to, to win with him at center. He does a nice job of, you know, all the things that are required, uh, ID and protections, ID in the run game. Uh, he, he's in tune with, with Cam, our quarterback, and uh, Jalen is a very talented athletic player. Uh, I think it'd be silly for us not to have our five best players out there. And so that what you're seeing is just us trying to find ways to get the five best players out there. And um, this isn't the first time we've ever done anything like that. Uh, it may be first time with the offensive line, but there's been other positions where we've had to uh, adjust people or, or move people around to get you know, our most talented players on the field. Or especially recently, a group you can kind of shuffle around, find guys in different spots. What's it say about that group that each of them are able to step up at different spots on the line? Well, I think it says, you know, a couple things. Uh, one, the willingness just to, to be good. Uh, coach, it doesn't matter where I play. Uh, if I'm playing right tackle this snap and I play center the next snap, whatever I need to do to help this football team be successful. So probably a great example of Bison Pride is we would, you know, define it in our, in our meeting rooms or in our team room. Uh, but also I, I have to give kudos and, and some credit to Coach Larson. Uh, he's done a great job of moving people around, day to day, week to week, so we could have this opportunity. You have to prepare for what ifs too. Um, we play a physical brand of football. We play a, a line of scrimmage oriented philosophy is, is what we execute here at NDSU. Uh, and we have to be prepared for what happens if a helmet comes off? 
well, who are we replacing? Who's the sixth guy? Who's the next tackle? Uh, do we get an ogre? What does that look like? Um, and so throughout the, the duration of fall camp, we've tried to challenge our guys. And when you have, you know, three, and you can even say, you know, four, you know, four or five veterans that are here, uh, they, they should be at a point in their career where we can challenge them a little bit. Game as opposed to say what we've seen the last few years of just a non-conference game at home. Kind of what's the biggest difference been for you guys leading into this uh, first game with you? Well, of course, the, the travel is, is going to be slightly different. I mean, you, you know, anytime you're not staying in town, but that would be the the main one. Uh, just uh, making sure we have everything. We have some first-time uh, players, uh, first-time staff members on our team, so making sure everyone has. You know, kind of what the logistics look like, what the details are in the travel, uh, all, you know, meeting time, what they need to pack. Uh, some of those things that are, you know, the, the typical fans not going to see, those are probably the things that uh, make me a little bit nervous. For the quarterback with just not many, you know, game reps out there, right. what, what, or what can you gather from what you've seen? A very extremely, I'm going to answer the second part of your question first. Very athletic. Uh, I think he can hurt you both with his feet. Uh, they've utilized him in some quarterback run game, trying to take advantage of his athleticism on the edge with some read zone. Uh, and if you're not disciplined as a defensive end, he's going to outflank you quick. Uh, you know, have gotten him involved in some of the draw game when they jump into empty and, and things. So, and then he's, he's willing to scramble. Now, I anticipate because he's a year older, he has X number of, of practice reps under his belt now that – Maybe he won't be as quick to take off because he can go through his progression a little bit better. But at the same time, we still need to be ready for those scramble situations and how we're going to plaster routes, who's going to be our recontain. Um, so it does it, it creates some challenges um, defensively for us. Depth chart, tight end Y and tight end U, what's that? We, we, how many times have you seen us play with two tight ends out there? And so our backside tight end, just a little bit different type of player, uh, can be more off the ball. Uh, you know, in, in, in what we do schematically, our Y is more of an on-the-ball position. Uh, and so, you know, every game we, we were in and out of so many different personnels, we felt like it was important to make sure that we recognized the guys who were out there. What's new to that depth chart? What, what's he done to... Well, he's just, you know, he's been here for a year now. Uh, a young man that uh, originally went to Buffalo, uh, played early in his career out there, came here and realized that, um, you know, I think just the volume of offense, the different schemes we have, not only in the run game, but also past concepts that he was required to learn, taking a, a, a year to learn what we're doing. He had a great catch radius where he needed to continue to improve was being on the, on the ball uh, at the point of attack, being able to set the edge. Our, our tight ends, we have grown very accustomed. When you go back a handful of years, uh, Ben Ellison, Noah Gindorf, Josh Babich, uh, just to name a couple, Joe Stoffel's doing it now, but those guys have done such a great job in our run game of creating edges and, and allowing us to get on the perimeter. More, throw more, or can you I, say? I, I think, you know, it's going to probably each week will be a little bit unique. Uh, I don't know if you always go into a game just saying, hey, we're going to throw this many times, he's going to play this many reps, but uh, he's an extremely talented young man that we need to make sure we take advantage of process like you know you're playing a team that hasn't played since November and it's week one obviously there's no tape from you know this season as it hasn't started yet and you're throwing the curveball the transfer portal as well well try to watch every single bit of film that they had from the 22 season uh, dive in to try to find any film you can find on a transfer maybe uh, that would give you a little bit of an inclination on what their skill set might possess uh, and so being as thorough as we can probably we're it's tough for both sides. Uh, we got some new names on our on our two deep as well that they're probably un, unaware of. Uh, all we can do is, is go in there and try to stop what we've seen. Um, have we prepared for maybe some what ifs? We have, but at the same time, you don't want to chase too many ghosts out there. Or otherwise, I don't think you'll be very good at anything. Uh, April, you're going to find out who's going to play corner. Tell us about Marcus Shepard and, and Reggie King specifically, two guys that are going to play quite a bit on Saturday. Both have continued to develop. Uh, we made the move with Reggie uh, pre kind of going in February. I wanted to start seeing the movement, uh, see the things if he could retain through the offseason, just some of the things with Coach Kramer starting to train more as a, as a corner versus a safety. Uh, Marcus Shepard's done a great job. And 
it, it's been fun to watch him evolve from when he arrived in January to now. Uh, has has really improved physically, but also the mental side of the game. And you're starting to see some flash plays out of him where you know that there's a comfort level that he's reached. Now, has he probably maxed out? I don't think so yet. But at the same time, I, I do like what Coach Lewis has done with that room. Um, you know, we're not as deep as what we've maybe have been in the past, but I do think there's there's still some other people in that room that can help us as we move forward. As a whole, you know, starting the year on a big stage against a relatively unknown offense, how much more important do those fundamentals become? Well, you, you always want to be superior in the fundamentals, especially uh, when you're playing a no-huddle team. Uh, you know, I think the reasons why teams jump into no-huddle or into tempo, because uh, they want to create poor communication. Uh, they want to get you off your spots, get you uncomfortable. Uh, it's not necessarily they're looking to beat you with, with technique. They're looking to beat you with errors. And so we have made a huge priority of we need to be fundamentally superior in this game. And, and what's that look like? Getting off blocks, tackling, uh, maintaining blocks, making catches, making the throws, just the basic fundamentals. You know, now, the first part of your question, I don't think this is an unknown offense. Uh, I think every kid on our team realizes the, the tradition, the success that Eastern Washington's had, not only at the quarterback position, but also at the wide receiver position. Uh, we quickly reminded them how talented they've been in the past. So I don't think there's a, a soul in our football facility that's overlooking this opportunity. Play their way into the depth chart since practice started, yeah, August 2nd, whatever. Anybody play their way in the last two, three weeks? Well, I don't know if necessarily into, into the depth chart, but they'll, as you know, there'll be some some bodies that play probably at the defensive line spot that, that aren't listed right there just because we only go too deep. Um, but I think a, a, a Logan Larson – uh, will we'll help us play. Cody Heisman will continue to help us win. Um, at the defensive end uh, position, there could be a Kelton McCaslin that you see on the field, and maybe even a, a young body or two that can help us. But uh, where I've seen a, a – and this is what's exciting is the number of different names that we're seeing on special teams right now, trying to limit some of the, the guys who are starting in, in their participation on special teams, but really feel like we have some depth at the skill positions on special teams right now. I'm looking, do you have that maybe Spencer Wagey or Braden Thomas, that one guy that can be the pass rusher on a you know third long type play? That remains to be seen. Uh, I, I don't want to put my foot in my mouth and say, I think it's going to be this guy or that guy. Uh, I don't need to add any extra stress to these guys' lives right now. But uh, if we can do it out of, you know, out of, you know, by committee, I'll, I'll be just fine with that. But I do think we're talented up front. I think we have some depth up front. Or just anticipatory, are you of just seeing this team? You have such guys that haven't been on a bus before, haven't played. Just your own excitement level of, of seeing this team for the first time. I'm excited. I, th I think Saturday it probably sunk in a little more. Saturday we did our mock game. Uh, just looking at the volume of second-year players now that we're out there warming up with us, going through what it looks like the from. Chapel Mass at 9 a.m. to meetings at 9.30 to walk through to pregame meal and, and, and going step by step through it, uh, basically practicing how to get ready for a game is what we were doing. Uh, I, I felt like Saturday was, was from a focus standpoint, from an air standpoint, very few – we had, we had officials here again. I think they threw four, only four penalties, which was positive. Um, and, again, the only ones I really are, am concerned about are the ones that we can directly impact, false starts, offsides, illegal formation, just things that, that we can clean up. Uh, what's holding one week could be different the next week, and what's PI is, is subjective from week to week. So, But I, I was pleased with, with how we handled ourselves and, and the tempo of the day, and each side of the ball got anywhere between probably 50 and 60 snaps. Have tryouts this week to see now you have 70 guys can go to get those last five or well, six spots. Being a, being a non-conference game, we're going to take as many as we can. Uh, the 70 would would not uh, happen until uh, probably mid October this year, once we get into conference play. Saturday then. 80, 90, we'll see. Captains, uh, every yep. single guy. So yep. What went to the selection process for the leadership there? Well, it was. I'm going to give you the expedited version of this. Uh, we, we allowed our team to vote for it, um, but uh, it was unique. Uh, just the volume of kids that received votes. Um, 
and that's always pleasing. Uh, one of the things we started talking about last February was multiplying leadership on our football team and not just not just saying, hey, it's the, this X number of people, but how can we multiply? How can we grow leaders? How can we continue to develop better leadership on our football team? Uh, I think the guys that were voted captains were probably the, the young men that uh, stood out the most to their teammates as far as being really having bison pride. Uh, and I think that's what it comes down to, guys that are willing to, to look out for their teammate, making sure that their needs are met before them. And uh, I'm excited that there's a handful of, of six-year guys. Um, you know, Jake Kubis, for one, uh, a legacy. Brother played here. Dad played here. Uh, I, I can only anticipate that the family and himself were extremely excited about that. Cam Miller, um, you know, being a starting quarterback now, going into his, into his really his third year starting, I mean, that, that shows the evolution that – He's gone from in 2020 when he barely knew a, a index card of what we were doing offensively to, to now being a captain. And, and, and I could go down the story or have a story or a little bit of something for all six of them. You have an or uh, with Kubitz and uh, Luke Weirtz. Is that waiting for somebody to take the job or how, how no, are you coaching the linebacker? I think both of them are really good football players. Uh, both of them kind of provide different skill sets. And so I think sometimes it could depend on what the opponent looks like that week. Um, you know, we got to find people that can help us defend what we're going to see that week, uh, not just defend the bison. And so I, that's the thing I challenge our coaches with is, hey, I know, we've, I know where people are through the fall, but you know, lining up against the bison is completely different than lining up against Eastern Washington. And so who are our best players to, to be competitive next Saturday, not against the bison? this fall that you're kind of hoping to see maybe out of the offense taking advantage of some of the skill at receiver yeah. and, and the quarterback that you have in his fourth year, whatever it is now. Right. Are you seeing that progress? Do you, and I think the, the, just the volume of access throws, uh, the volume of uh, pass game, it, it could be naked, it could be play action, it, it could be drop back, or, or access throws has increased uh, dramatically from years past. Uh, I think that's a positive because, again, I, I think it's going to force teams to have to defend the field. Are you, now you have to really make a big – are you going to defend us in single high, too high, and, and, and what structure are you going to be in? Um, at the same time, I've challenged our offer. We need to make sure that we're prepared for something different as well um, each week because uh, it doesn't seem – teams kind of have a unique way of defending us. Uh, some of it's copycat. Some of it's um, – you know, it, they just lean on what other people have – what's been successful in the past. All right. During camp, besides the Zenzen injury, are you, are you healthy to go? Well, Enoch, of course, right. as well. So I would comment on both. Both those guys are doing well. Both have had surgery. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm tired of seeing those little scooters that all our guys with ankle issues ride around on. Um, but yeah, I, I think both of them will end up. Uh, Hunter will use a, a redshirt ear uh, that he has because he's a COVID uh, recruit. And Enoch, unfortunately, I think has already used his redshirt year. But uh, both are in good spirits. Both are excited about, you know, being down with the team on Saturday. And both have provided energy and, and, and done everything they can. But otherwise, uh, still healthy. We need to keep it that way, right, Dom? All right, appreciate you guys. Thank you.